Pop star Sky Riley is preparing a comeback tour. Problem is, she seems to have gotten a demonic entity attached to her, the silly duffer. And she's got six days to get rid of it, before it forces her to take her own life in the most horrific way possible. It's the sequel to the sleeper hit with a whole new cast in... Smile 2. Hello there, you loose units, and welcome back to another episode of Spicy Boy Halloween Reviews. I'm, of course, your host, Andrew Isles. That's right, the sequel, Smile 2, written and directed by Parker Finn, who's known for directing the previous instalment. We meet pop star Sky Riley. She's planning a huge comeback world tour after having a drug fueled meltdown publicly a while back that resulted in a car accident killing her famous actor boyfriend. She's now sober, trying to right her wrongs and giving her fans exactly what they want. She's still suffering from injuries from the aforementioned car accident and is almost always in constant pain. Problem is, being a recovering narcotics addict, no one will prescribe her any painkillers of merit. But wouldn't you know it? She's friends with a dealer named Lewis, who always got the goods. Problem is though, Lewis has that demonic smiling bitch entity from the previous film attached to him. It's a case of wrong place, wrong time, as Sky witnesses Lewis doing some sick gains with a 20 pound weight to his face. And as we know from the previous film, now this entity has attached itself to Sky. With her mental state already hanging by a thread, and with everyone keeping a very close eye on her, making sure she doesn't act all weird, in hopes that, you know, she doesn't relapse. STAKES! However, Skye starts acting all weird and erratic, her mental state comes into question, as she begins to see visions everywhere and people suspecting that she may be back on the gear. She starts seeing people everywhere with this creepy smile on their face, and she doesn't get a wink of sleep any night because jump scares are keeping her up. This film does take its time with the build. And at one point, I actually forgot I was watching a horror film, being invested in this character of Skye and how lonely it is at the top, and an attempt at a redemption. But then, before long, the creepy starts to ramp up, and you start asking yourself, yeah, this is cool and all, but who's going to tell Sky what's happening or what's attached to her? And wouldn't you know it? All of a sudden, a random dude rocks up and conveniently knows all the smile lore, as his brother was once a victim, and his brother spilled the beans and let him know everything before he self-deleted. And then he gives some Sky some exposition dumping, and he also has a theory of how to stop it. The film has some very creative transitional shots and some long one-take scenes that are very impressive. And there are some truly unsettling and super tense moments with some very creepy imagery. The most unsettling scene for me, though, was the scene in the apartment with all of Skye's dancers. No gore at all, just very creatively creepy. And of course, you're still going to shit yourself with a couple of abrupt jump scares that just pop up out of nowhere. Our lead is a famous pop star, so of course we have to have some original music from the character. And it's fair to say that the songs in this film were quite believable and accurate. And they sound exactly like the disposable dribble that pollutes modern radio. And the songs sound exactly like they're from that artist, uh, what's her name, the one that fills all those arenas. Uh, Lady Leaper, Sabrina Rodrigo. You know, NPC music. And at times the film has some very darkly humorous moments. And I did laugh out loud on occasion due to the scenario the character was in and the awkwardness. And I really appreciated these moments because it relieved the tension at times. There is one particular scene that's very uncomfortable and darkly amusing. Just think of the award ceremony scene out of A Star Is Born, something along those lines. I was invested in this film as it was going on and it got to a point where I wasn't 100% sure how they were going to end it. There's a lore to play with with this film, and a potential to make a franchise with many, many, many sequels, with different characters and different scenarios. And it wasn't about till the 10 minutes before the end I was like, oh shit, they're gonna go there. It was a holy hell ending that uh, has possibilities for many, many future installments. The main criticism I will say about this film, however, is it was a bit too long and it felt it. The story was engaging enough and there was a nice build there, but at one point it started feeling a little bit tiresome and could have easily shaved off 15 to 20 minutes of the film. Naomi Scott as the lead was really good too. She had a lot to do with this character and I felt like she nailed it. She had to go from manic to vulnerable to terrified all in a few seconds. And honestly, I believed every minute. 
I also totally forgot that she played Jasmine in that god-awful Aladdin live-action remake. And Kimberly, the Pink Ranger in the Power Rangers movie remake. And that other remake that... we won't talk about. Ugh. This is a really well-made film, and I enjoyed my time with it. Do I recommend it? Yeah, it's Halloween month, it's October, go bloody see it. It's not the best thing I've seen by any stretch of the imagination, but I had a decent time with it. I can't really gauge if I prefer it more than the first one, I suppose it depends what mood I'm in. And it's been a while since I've seen the first one, so I might watch it again for Halloween. But anyway guys, this is my cheeky little review of Smile 2, right down below if you've seen it. What are your thoughts on it, but more importantly, what is your favourite cursed horror film? And of course, if you made it this far into the episode, please give me a thumbs up because your love and support keeps me going because I just love movies and I assume you do as well. And of course, don't forget to hit that subscribe icon because I give it an episode weekly. And I'll see you back here next week for the next review, but until then, stay spooky, kids.